People who had a rough childhood often go through life feeling and knowing, really, that they're different than most people. And it's well known that early exposure to violence and addiction, abuse, neglect, they can have a lifelong effect on mental health and behavior. It's common sense, right? But until recently, researchers understood these effects to be mostly psychological or learned from dysfunctional parents. And while this is partly true, we now know the primary injury is neurological. Early trauma dysregulates the brain and nervous system, potentially triggering a whole range of problems from obesity to ADHD to heart disease to sex addiction. But for people with childhood PTSD, just being dysregulated is a problem that makes ordinary things in life ridiculously hard. Things like going on a date, spending time alone, expressing an opinion, or you know, just buying a jacket can set it off. So if you could see an MRI image of the brain in this dysregulated state, what you'd see in the front left cortex, it would go darker and dimmer and less active under stress, hampering the ability to reason and pay attention. And you'd see the right front cortex just flaring, you know, whoo, which is a flood of emotions and activity there. Suppressed reasoning, overreactive emotions. This is familiar, right? This is what it feels like. It's not all in your mind, it turns out. It's in your brain. So there's this change of activity. Brain waves are irregular. Breathing and heart rate become ragged and out of sync and there might be numbness in your hands or your mouth or your face. And it can be hard to find words or to complete a task you're in the middle of or even to just pay attention. So personally, I get clumsy and I trip on the curb and drop things when I'm dysregulated. My handwriting changes, does yours? For a lot of us, we say things that we don't mean and we do things that we don't wanna do. Or we may grow silent and withdrawn or we may feel desperate and act impulsively or fly into a rage and lash out. So after an outburst like this, a trauma reaction, we might feel no emotion and we could behave coldly to the people we've just hurt. My friend once told me that when I get upset sometimes, I have a blank expression on my face and my voice goes flat. So it's impossible for other people to tell from the outside what I'm feeling, but it looks like I don't care. And I remember a teacher telling me once that my son in his preschool had been really naughty that day. And when she told me that I felt mortified and I kind of freaked out about it. And she said, I'm telling you this and you obviously don't care. And I finally have some insight about why she would say that, why people have ever thought so about me. I do care. And you might have this too. It's a very hard thing where people can't read you. But here's the thing, these reactions are not happening because I'm bad or you're bad or anybody's necessarily being bad or selfish or weak. I mean, you know, sometimes we are, right? But these reactions are happening or they're made worse because the brain is dysregulated. Nobody knew this before, not doctors, not therapists, not preschool teachers, nobody knew. But now we know. So one way that I've described the feeling of dysregulation to people who have never really experienced it is that it's like wearing a pair of headphones with like really loud music just blasting in your ears and you're, you're wearing somebody else's glasses that make everything blurry and you're wearing a giant pair of shoes a foot long for your feet and a mop is on your head and all the dirty strings are slapping you in the face and no one can see this and they think you're normal and, and you're trying to pretend that you are normal and that you feel fine and that you are in the conversation, but actually you're frustrated, you're getting pulled out, you're disconnected, you're uncomfortable, but you have to try to guess what a connected person would say in that situation. It's very anxiety provoking, right? You have to think about how to hold your face so it looks appropriate to whatever the other person is saying only you can't really hear what they're saying because the noise in your head is so loud and you have a mop on your head. <laughs> so dysregulation gets activated when we're confronted with stressors and crises. And remember, it can suppress your ability to reason while it amps up your emotions. So you see how this explains so much of why those of us with childhood PTSD appear to keep making the same bad choices over and over, 
even when we say we're never going to do it again and we mean we're never going to do it again, but then you look down and there you are doing it again. So I'm here to tell you, you can break this cycle. You really are capable of making good choices and good changes, but it would really help if you could learn to re-regulate. So how do you know when dysregulation is happening? Let's start with the regulated state and what that feels like. When you're calm, brain activity is even and it's driving body responses and emotions in an even and predictable way. But when strong emotions trigger dysregulation, your thinking changes. You can go into reactivity. You might withdraw, get silent, get confused, say things, freak out, or do something impulsive. And it's hard to perceive accurately what's going on in those moments. Like, you know, what just happened? What's the actual problem? Is it me? Is it the other person? What am I supposed to say? So in our dysregulated state, we might totally misread whether a person is safe or dangerous, and we can't tell whether our words and actions are appropriate to the situation. And sometimes we say things and do things that we later regret. So the trick to noticing dysregulation is to recognize the signs. And that might be a little different in different people, but here are some clues. One is you feel spaced out or at a loss for words and you can't remember where you are. Or you feel scattered and you're trying to do a lot of things at once, but you're not really finishing anything. Have you had that? Or you're tripping over things, dropping things, losing things, can't find your phone, your keys, your jacket, your purse. Your voice and facial expressions are flat, or you're in a rage, or you feel a huge urgency to express what's bothering you, or you can't feel parts of your body, your hands, your mouth, your face, your nose, your feet, or dysregulation often begins with an emotional flood. You get very upset or scared or something that's said or something happens, but sometimes the trigger is nothing you noticed. You can wake up dysregulated, in fact. So that's what it's like to be dysregulated. And I've put a quiz in the description section. It's on the free tools page. There's a quiz to find out if you're dysregulated, if you're showing the common symptoms. It's a self-assessment. Now, the most important question is, what can you do? So first, you notice that you're dysregulated. And if you can do this, one thing, you can control your negative impulses and give yourself the time and space to re-regulate before you begin saying anything or doing anything that could be destructive. So if you're flooding with emotion, going numb, say to yourself, I'm getting dysregulated. All right, number two, be safe. This is not a good time to drive a car. Seriously, pull over and take your time. Don't go running into a crosswalk or try to use a table saw when you're dysregulated. Give all your focus to getting yourself into a physically safe place where you can pause. If you are threatened with violence, some of this won't apply. So just return all your focus in that case to getting yourself into a physically safe space, whatever it takes. All right, number four, if what triggered you was an argument. Instead of escalating the fight, you can use gentle words to stop the interaction, at least temporarily. Like, I want to continue this conversation. I want to hear what you're saying, but I need to take a breather to calm down. Or you can say, if you don't want to tell the other person that you're triggered and just tell them you need a bathroom break. Or if you're on the phone, you can just say you have a call on the other line. Now, when you need to step back from a situation, you don't have to get into a big discussion about it because remember, talking about it can actually make dysregulation worse. So just find a way to put the conversation on pause. Number six is then to buy some time. Separate from the other person if you can. Go to a room by yourself, even if it's the bathroom. No one has to know what you're doing. If it feels urgent, take an even longer time before you try to resolve anything. Number seven is, and this is a quick technique, stamp your feet on the floor. You'd be amazed how helpful it is to bring yourself back into present time, into your body. And as you stamp each foot, say quietly to yourself, right, left, right, left. And this helps your brain begin to re-regulate. You can also take 10 deep breaths, focusing particularly on the out breath. So, like that. Another measure you can take that no one knows you're doing is you can press your tongue to the back of your teeth like like that number 10 is you can sit down and feel the weight of your butt in the chair and this is one more way to get back inside your body now remember inside your body out of your body it's a figure of speech of course you're in your body but you're not in full command of your faculties when you're dysregulated or dissociated 
All right, number 11. Sometimes what you need is to eat something. And when you're stressed, you'll probably crave carbs and sugar, but it's protein foods that will help you get grounded again. So mix that into whatever you're eating, add it. Number 12, if you need some comfort, you can wash your hands and feel the water and soap on your hands. Warm water is beautifully calming. Number 13, if you have a trusty friend with you, you can get a good squeezing hug and it can really help re-regulate your brain. If no one's around, try pressing your back into a corner and then wrap your arms around yourself so you can feel pressure all around your torso. We're wired to calm down when we're hugged. And that's it. You now have a whole bunch of things that you can do when you notice you're dysregulated. And I've written them down in a downloadable PDF that you can access in the links below. I go deeper into the science of dysregulation in my course, Healing Childhood PTSD, also Dysregulation Boot Camp, two different courses. So I'll put those links down below too. Some people ask me, is medication helpful for treating dysregulation? And some researchers say yes, and some say no. But given that we now know that the underlying problem with a lot of childhood PTSD symptoms, it's not a chemical imbalance per se that's corrected by the introduction of chemicals. There's evidence that some medications can actually do more harm than good. And one of the reasons may be that they interfere with your natural ability to re-regulate after a period of dysregulation. So think about that. Everybody gets dysregulated sometimes and everybody eventually re-regulates. With CPTSD, we tend to get dysregulated more often for longer periods of time and it's harder to come back from. So the goal is to learn to re-regulate as soon as you notice it and then to stay regulated more of the time. So that's the first part of the solution. The second part then with your nice, fresh, regulated mind is to work on the behaviors and circumstances that flowed out of you living your life dysregulated so much of the time. The childhood trauma happened and we definitely were affected by it, but this is the stuff that holds us back now. It's the dysregulation and the behaviors. So that's the essence of what I teach in my courses and coaching programs. Learn to re-regulate your brain and emotions. And I teach people how to do that. And two, acknowledge what happened to you and then put it over on the side so you can stop dwelling on it or identifying with it. And then move your focus to healing the life problems that are holding you back today. The habits, the behaviors, and the reactions that you have. Focus on right now what you're doing to make a happy life right now, to become your real self right now. Because it's time <laughs> and the past can't touch you now. It's time to be your real self, even if it's funky, because it's beautiful. You're a miracle. You are made to be something much more than someone who struggles. And if you can master re-regulation, you can then have all this space in your life and all this possibility. You can meet people and try things and quit things and make a positive difference in the world. That's where happiness comes from. These all become choices when you learn to re-regulate. You can go back to school. You can try your hand at a relationship. You can tell your story without flying out of your body and collapsing into a crying mess. You can choose what you want to spend time thinking about. It's really nice. And I made a video about what it's like when you heal. And I've got that for you right here. And I will see you very soon.